Okay, the primary target vessels, we have four targets. The Kato, the Reen Buen, the Fishbank One, and the Marie. The four primary vessels have been chosen because they kill more whales than the entire fleet. We will not be interrupting their operations. We are just there to capture content, nothing more. The Kato, she is the only vessel in the fleet that whales full time. Greenpeace, uh, they did engage the Kato and tried to disrupt a whaling operation. The rib got underneath the bow of the Kato and Ola Micklebust did actually put a shot into the boat. I do believe he lost his Master Mariner's certificate for that and his brother Dag is now in charge. So if we're going to get any issues, it will be with Dag. These two guys and the uh, company uh, Micklebust uh, Val product, uh, which is essentially Micklebust whale products, Fishbank One, she's actually rigged fore and aft, so she does have a harpoon in the bow and a harpoon in the stern. These are grenade tipped, uh, so we don't want to be on the wrong end of them. They all carry a minimum 375 elephant rifle to put the whale down if it isn't dead. They could ram us, so be aware of that. We'll always be in pairs. If anything goes wrong, there's two engines then. The footage needs to reveal the reality of modern whaling. If we fail to capture a range of whaling operations, it won't trigger further investigation of this questionable business. So this is the spectacular Yorkshire coast and the North Sea there behind me. I spent my childhood exploring the foreshore here and used to look forward to the minke whales arrival here off the headland and they migrate up into the Norwegian Sea and the Barents Sea to find out that the Norwegians were whaling in modern times. It was kind of a shock to me. So that was the driver to start asking questions and look at modern day whaling in Norway that target these whales that live off this headland. I'll hand over to Hannah to deliver the int brief, okay? Thanks, Pete. Now I'm going to be running you through the intelligence picture. One of the targets is Verina Bowen, which is owned by the company Lofotval. And this man, the last Icelandic whaler, has a 12.5% share in Lofotval. The Reinebuen is responsible for a, quite a large percentage of the catch, and it's one of the larger vessels. Skipper is Bjorn Andersen, who is a big name in the whaling industry in Norway because he is head of the Small Whalers Association. Another primary target is the Kato, which is owned by Mikkelbust. They are the only vessel that exports to Japan. Fiskbank One is another big player. They contribute a lot to the overall Norwegian catch. The final target is actually the Marie, which is interesting because it has a fairly new and young crew. However, they're extremely efficient and are expected to catch quite a few whales this season. Wildlife protection, certainly for me, is important. It's one thing I can put back in, in, in my lifetime. Most of our guys are elite military backgrounds, our intelligence, our law enforcement. We've influenced laws at governmental level and we've saved a lot of wildlife and there's a lot more left to save. The primary driver was why. The indicator for us that they're actually on a whale will be one of the crewmen manning the crow's nest. We'll then come into formation and we'll hang back to 300 meters. If they're staying on the whale, the skipper will then come out the wheelhouse and going on the roof to the dual controls. Okay, thanks, Ben. The next indicator will be the harpoonist. Once that harpoon is manned, Rich, the drone goes up, okay? We cannot go over until Rich gives us the nod because he may miss the whale, okay? So. It's down to you, Rich. If you're sure that that whale's attached to the harpoon, and then you give us a nod, then we go over it. But two, Ben and Rich, you stick with the whale. But one, me and Jay, we'll come round, and then we will film the vessel. They are committed. So if that whale's harpooned, they are committed. They have to go through all their processes, and uh, we'll capture it all on camera. Legend, the boys on tour were going on a fishing trip and we'll keep it as basic as that, okay? As for the area of operation, the AO in general, we're gonna be working up the northern tip of Norway and we're gonna be working in these fjords here in the Norwegian and the Barents Sea. And that's where we'll be based initially from the North Cap. 
we've got a two and a half thousand mile road move. I'm here in Norway to dig a little bit deeper to understand just why Norway is whaling in the 21st century when it seems so archaic and at odds with Norway's green credentials. I'm on my way to meet Lars Velo, who has been instrumental in Norway's whaling and actually in Japan's whaling as well. He worked as the scientific advisor to the Norwegian government on marine mammals during the 1990s when Norway decided to resume commercial whaling. The whaling, which are now for mink whales, that started during medieval times. Whaling with harpoon guns and steamboats started to develop also by Norwegians. They started to go to northern Norway and catch whales, big whales, large whales. Humpback whales took them ashore, cut them up. That was the start of modern whaling. And the whale oil was the only thing they got. It was an industrial tradition. Does minky whale meat go into pet food in Norway? No. Historically, whaling was certainly the biggest threat that whales had. By the 1950s to 1970s, pretty much all species were endangered. The size of whales is reduced because whalers were going often for the females that are largest. There was a shift in the 1960s and 1970s in many countries to stop whaling. Could you explain your role at the research committee and what the research committee actually does? We provide advice to the government about uh, management and conservation. And can you define sustainable for me? What does it mean to be sustainable in terms of whaling? In terms of whaling, sustainable is that you are harvesting the surplus production in the population without depleting the population itself. The current quota is 917 minke whales. Are any of the females pregnant when they're caught? Yes, females are, uh, about 90% of the females are pregnant uh, every year, so they are pregnant uh, uh, when they are caught. How do you know that is a sustainable amount of whales to catch? We need an abundance estimate and the, the current and past catch statistics. That's the input parameter. The abundance estimate changed from about 100,000 to 150,000 in the recent estimate. More mink whales are coming into the areas of the Northeast Atlantic where Norway do the counting. It's probably more an effect of climate change than an effect of population growth. The amount of minkies that are in the entire world, do we know that number? Do we know how many minkies there are globally? Not very precisely. So minky whales are in Norwegian waters in the summertime, and that's when the whaling season is. Yeah. Do we know where minkies go after they've left Norway? No, we uh, know that they go south to breed before they return to Norwegian waters uh, the next uh, spring. At this point, there's still a lot of unknowns with minkies. We don't know where they breed. We don't know a lot about their feeding. And that uncertainty makes managing hard. When I was doing research on minke whales, I found a report written in 2022 by VKM, which is the Norwegian Scientific Committee for Food and Environment. This particular report was requested by the Norwegian government. It was written as a risk assessment on the state of minke whales in the world. What stood out for me was a section called data gaps, which told me a lot more than the rest of the report lack of knowledge on location of breeding grounds, age and gender structure, distributional shifts, impact of climate change, impact of pollutants, all these things that are fundamental to understanding a species. 
this just pointed to how much research needs to be done before we can deem something like whaling sustainable. Whaling is described in the report as the major cause of unnatural mortality for minkies, which means whaling is taking out more minkies than the other threats described, like bycatch, entanglement, ship strikes, pollution, noise pollution. But these are quite difficult to tackle. Whaling is the biggest threat to minky whales, and it's the easiest to fix. When something like the survival of a species is at play here, we need to know more. The Marie, like the Reen Buen, it's a, just a break throughout the calendar month to go whaling. They're efficient fishermen. They don't need to go whaling, but it's a case of their, they have the right to go whaling and they like to do it, so it's a break in the season. It was previously built as a whaling ship. We decided that uh, it was a good time now for the company. And we tried this whaling now last year. So it was a good, it's a good resource for food for people. As humans, we always strive to get more efficient. And it was that with the whaling. They got the harpoons guns better and the boats were better and they started to yeah, over harvest. It should be a different name for the minky hunting, hunting in my opinion, because it's a different type of uh, catching the whales now. It's uh, modern whaling, you can call it maybe, because that's what it is now. The Norwegian market is uh, the only ones handling this meat or buying it, because we can't export it. You can export to Japan, but uh, that's a bit complicated, so most of the meat is sold here in Norway and eaten in Norway. We're at the very early days of understanding how whales communicate. Whales and dolphins perceive the world in way different ways than we do. What we view as intelligence needs to be expanded. Is that noise the whales? Yeah. It is. Talking. That like clicking noise. These little slight up calls, uptick sounds. The first time we put a hydrophone in the water, it was like being at a concert. It was amazing to hear all these different sounds, and I swear you couldn't see any whales around you. We are pretty monitored and pretty controlled. And that's important, because then we can't be criticized. Come check us. We are doing this legally. I'm Nils Öyen, and I'm responsible for the whale uh, sighting survey program. I don't think that the total population has increased by 50%. I suspect that there is a feeding competition going on on several species. I hope that we get a better understanding of migration and habitat use of uh, mink whales. You know, it's also a question uh, whether it is interesting enough or it's easy enough. Do you think just because it's difficult, it shouldn't be done? It's very difficult to get resources to do such research because that is in the margin of society. What do you think about the precautionary principle where if you don't know enough, you act with caution? So in this case, it might be we don't know that much about minkies, so we wouldn't hunt them. If there's something very serious happened, you would uh, see that, I think, and could then take action. Do you think it would be too late by the time you saw? Uh, Maybe, but uh, also getting uh, abundance estimates is a slow process. What underlies our findings, and, and the need is there needs to be more research before you can actually say these whales can be hunted sustainably. He did readily admit that they didn't know enough about minkies. Science is difficult to find funding for, but you know this industry has been subsidized by the Norwegian government. So maybe some of that funding should have gone into the science before they decided to subsidize whaling. So I don't accept that argument. You set the foundations for success. Yep. Let's drag on forward and see what else you can uncover.
Have you seen some whales? 300 meter on this way. Fin whale we have it now. And then uh, minky. I guess it will be a hunting here tonight. That's the charge and a gasket. And inside here is like a firing pin with a rope connected to this hook. So when the hook catches in the flesh of the whale, it drags it out about 50 centimeters. So this grenade will explode inside of the whale, moment uh, instantly killing it. It's a really effective uh, grenade and one of the best improvements. The harpoon hasn't changed in a bit, uh, but the grenade, which you use in front of it, that's a new development from the Norwegian government in the 1980s and early 1990s. And their goal was to find a way to kill the whale instantly. It wouldn't have been whaling today if this grenade hadn't been invented. First you have to find the whale. It's usually going after food. So when you find the good fishing grounds, it can stay there for a long time. So you saw that? The ones who see the most whale are the ones uh, hunting it. Yeah, so I don't want to get it. Same, same way. You also have the weather concentration. And I would never say it's easy to shoot the whale, not here in the Barents Sea. The carter, as we've seen dropping down into the fjord, is anchored inside these islands here. Ground in general, this is our camp now. These are the island groups that we're going to be working in. These three islands are part of the Geese for Stappen Nature Reserve. If we can get geared up as quickly as we, we can, uh, we'll try and get some covert drone footage of the carter, which is our target vessel number one, processing whales with inside the Geese Verstappen Nature Reserve. Ben, Rocky, if you guys could stay behind and set up camp, I'll take boat number one with Jago, uh, lead camera, and Rich, if you can get the drone ready, you'll be in boat number two. We should get a, a nice sheltered spot to put the drone up, Rich, and then hopefully we'll get the footage that we need. Okay, guys, let's crack on. We've seen one of the, the target vessels in and around these small islands. I'm not quite sure what she's doing, and we'll find out when we stop. See if it is achievable to fly to that, and, uh, and let's have a look. Cause that's the Kato, so that's the primary target. It's been there a while. She's either at anchor, but it looks like she's got something alongside. These bits of kit are just amazing. As an air asset, they are a game changer. When you've got a talented pilot, you can be virtually undetectable by the distance and by hiding in the clutter of the background landscape. I'm in Bovagen, where I processed whale meat during the whaling season. My research has shown that whale meat potentially ends up in pet food, but I want to find out from a whale processor himself if that's true. So, the big pieces we start with, it's about 200, uh, 300 kilos. So this is pet food. What do you think other countries would feel about Norway making pet food out of whales? Yeah, we think they are basic. Or you make whale meat for dogs here. Do other companies do the same thing? Do they feed yeah, it to yeah, dogs? Yeah, yeah. Is it popular? Yeah. Why do you think people but want to feed whale uh, to their dogs? But, but because uh, it's popular because it's, the price is very low. The whale meat pet food was openly on display. He also mentioned that there are bigger processing factories up north that also make pet food. 
the largest whale meat producer in Norway, Mikkelbost, has their own line of dog food. Mikkelbost says that around 10% of the whale meat that they catch is not suitable for human consumption and that that goes into pet food. In 2022, Mikkelbost caught 204 whales. 10% of that is 20 whales. 20 whales went into making dog food just from this one company. We've been out here for the last few hours now, and they've been tracking up and down, up and down. Somebody in the crow's nest just waiting to harpoon one of the whales that's moving through the area. I'm here in Bergen outside one of the most popular fish restaurants, and I'm going to see if they have whale on the menu. Here they're serving roasted whale with potato puree and caramelized root vegetables. So I've just walked up off the street and found it on the menu. It's really readily available, but I wonder how popular it actually is. Do many Norwegians eat it? Why not? It's very strong. The chef told me that some tourists come to try whale meat out of curiosity, but he said it's not popular with the locals. They tend to go for fish. Tomorrow, we're speaking to Amund Marge. He is the guy who tested the whale meat samples, and that's the last food safety yeah. test that they've done. If I think back 10 years ago, our understanding of what was dangerous to consume must be so different now, 10 years on. Like, think of all the chemicals we've created yeah. in that time. I mean, it's a significant fact, isn't it? It's a decade's gone by without any testing. That's like, wow. Without having tested whale meat in 10 years, can you say for sure that it's safe for people to eat? I wouldn't know until I had done the analysis. Can contaminant levels change a lot in one species from year to year? They are changing much more in geographical areas and also with size. The large fish are problematic. The minke whale, because it's relatively high up in the food chain. What does that kind of mean from a risk perspective for contaminants and consuming minke whale? It could be uh, accumulating mercury. That's why I guess you were, you were here. What do we know is a problem now that we didn't know was a problem 10 years ago? The emerging contaminants. It's an enormous group of substances. So I think it would be a good idea to, to measure again, yes. Do you think you're, you're going to do that test? That could uh, possibly be the outcome of uh, your interview. <laughs> My investigation has taken me to Trondheim, the capital of knowledge in Norway and home to the largest university. I want to dig into the consumer side of the whaling industry. I've heard that whale meat is healthy, but how can we know that it's really safe? The scientists that we've spoken to so far yeah. about minkies in particular don't really know where they go, especially for breeding yeah. and in the winter. That could potentially mean that they're in extremely polluted waters. From Norway, they go south during the winter. They think. They pass by the UK. If one individual is close to Europe, where maybe levels along the coast is high, this individual will have higher concentrations. They will be exposed when they swim and consume food. We spoke to the Food Safety Authority, and they told us that they haven't tested any minky samples since 2012. Yeah. So that's 10 years. Levels were actually relatively high in 2012, from what I've seen in this report. I would recommend to do it more often, just to have control. At least now, when we're aware of these new chemicals, some of them are carcinogenic. And of course, we don't know the effects of all of them. Is that a big concern? That's a big concern. The higher levels of PFAS you have, especially in, in children, the less you respond to vaccine. That's pretty significant. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think it's okay that there's this product on the market for people to buy that they have no idea what's in it? Should be careful about eating too much of it. The most significant transfer is when the offspring is in the stomach of the mother, and they also get something through their mother's milk. Could that potentially be the same for humans? That's the same for humans. 
would you be concerned about consuming minky whale if it hadn't been tested in so long? No, not me. I'm old <laughs> and I've already reproduced. What about someone like me? Someone like you, I would um, not eat a lot of it. You see a big difference in numbers of the type of whale. You can see a lot of humpback and this minky whale is also a lot of now. There are days we fill the deck and we have to lay still because we have caught so many. Yeah, no, I'm just rattling for a word, eh, bro? Yeah, I'm just rattling first thing we do after the shot is to start the winch to get the whale to the bow so we can throw this chain around the tail of the whale. And after we had this chain around, we get it to the side of the ship and we cut off this tail and we make a groove in the side of the whale on the back for the strap, which we use to winch it on the deck, which we process the whale on. You take all the easy accessible meat. On the normal whale, it's maybe 1,500 kilograms of meat. So you get a lot of meat per individual. Never touched the whale before. You never, yeah. First time. It's not many people who have done that. Yeah. We have to get the temperature down to 15 degrees before we take the whale meat to these tanks which have eyes around the meat. It has been down for quite a few years, but I believe in the future of the whaling. The food resource which the whale lives on is too scarce. It will be too much of a competition. So we have to regulate the stocks. There's no evidence that we can have too many whales. In does the minky whale eat all the fish? Yeah. But they don't do that. So it's not a conflict between the fisheries and the whales eating all the fish. You could even lose some fish populations from taking those whales out. They can actually promote growth. Like how we use cow manure to fertilize gardens, the whales are doing that as well comparable to all the nitrogen or these nutrients that are in this system, whales are essentially doubling it. So they come into this area, release that nitrogen, and then you see this boost of productivity. And what the whales are doing are creating this whale pump, so they're bringing nutrients to the surface. Marine researcher Yergi studies one of the minke whale's major food sources, and he looks at how contaminants move up the food chain. Would you be concerned about consuming minky whale? I would be concerned. The whales are generally uh, exposed to a lot of waterborne contaminants, like chemicals. When we spoke last time, you said it was a human health risk not worth taking. Yeah, well, I would think twice, definitely, yeah. How can people who eat minky whale avoid contamination? Mm. Stop eating minky whale. I don't think a lot of Norwegians are aware of or even think about the whaling issue. Just because Norwegians aren't seeing it every day doesn't mean it's not happening in their own waters. Over 500 minkies are killed every year, and I think that's something worth talking about. Do you have any idea why Norway is still whaling when so many other countries have stopped? I know that we don't buy it, because I think that my family think it's morally wrong. But, okay. um, other than that, I don't know much about it. 
And is it popular in Norway? Are there many places you can buy it? Not really. Why? Why not? Well, I guess it's a cultural thing, you know, because of the history, it's been uh, a bit frowned upon. Yeah. Do you think it will grow in popularity in the years to come? Well, <laughs> I hope not, but people have to eat. I wish we did more. Yeah. But how, what can we do? Like, how do we stop this? For me personally, I feel like it's wrong to kill whales because I don't get anything out of killing a whale. When they kill whales in Norway, they use a grenade. The idea is that the whale dies instantly, but one in five doesn't. If the norm was that one in five will be yeah. physically hurting for 20 minutes, then I would have a big problem. Females tend to be bigger and slower, so they're an easier target. Around 70% of the whales that get killed in Norway are female, and 90% of them are pregnant. Me, myself, I, I hunt deer, mm -hmm. and the hunting season is fitted so that I am not able to ever shoot a female deer with a baby inside her yeah. tummy. I believe that's a lack of regulation. Norwegians that I've been speaking to on the street have been really inquisitive and have admitted that they don't know that much about whaling in Norway, despite the fact that they could be faced with whale as a choice in the supermarket. It definitely leads me to question how big a part of Norwegian culture this can be if so many people don't know that much about it. What about when whales die? This is a, an enormous amount of resources that are going into the deep sea when they die. They can have hundreds of kilograms, thousands of kilograms of carbon that when they die can be sequestered into that deep sea and stay for hundreds of years. All right, we'll just stir. Knock engines up. We'll just drift for a while because they're hunting. Obviously, there's, what, there's somebody in the crow's nest, yeah. but there's nobody on the, on the half home. So, so we're all right. we just look like sports boats. So, when a single whale dies and falls to the deep sea, it's this big habitat. It's like a new island that's forming in the deep sea. More than a hundred species, including worms, crabs, different types of crustaceans, mollusks, colonize these areas and are only found in dead whales. They're called whale fall species. The Kerto is laid at anchor with a whale alongside, north northeast of our position, and we're going to put the drone up and hopefully use the sun to get the drone in and get some quality footage. Hopefully. Historically, there would have been 10 times more islands and bigger islands in the deep sea. What happens when you remove those by whaling? So it's very important not only to preserve whales because we care about the whales at the surface, but also for these deep sea species. Shattering the kata, and we saw the plume of smoke as the harpoon went, and we, we were hanging back 500 meters. Looked, saw that the harpoon line was tight, so there was a whale harpooned. So we went over. Then go, go round to where the line is, yeah? There she is, look. She's coming out now. She's still alive. Rotten bastard. When the grenade doesn't kill a whale instantly, or the shot misses the vital organs, they suffer for a long time. It's edging slowly. Right, let's go in close. It's still alive. Yeah, it's shocking. A mistake people tend to make is that if they find something in large amounts, they think they can just take it and remove it from the environment without causing any harm. But you have to remember that those animals fulfill a purpose and are part of a food chain. They have a role even after they die. Can we call the 
police. Yeah, that's fine. Back off. She's dead now, I think. This whale took 21 minutes to die, with a harpoon and two 375 bullets stuck into it. That's hideous in anyone's book. It was clearly an agonizing death and totally unethical. The whale was fighting for a very, very long time. Not the kind of footage that one would want to be filming. However, uh, it's, it's something that needs to be documented and shown uh, because it's something that isn't uh, in the public eye as much as uh, other areas of conservation. So it's very important. You know, saying that it's cultural or saying that it's sustainable from a scientific perspective is like painting it all with one big brush. What is Norway actually getting out of this? Some people like to eat it. Is that really a justification well, enough? The, the story they're pushing is very wishy-washy. Because it's not subsistence. Norway has an abundance of food and it maybe served a purpose back in the 60s, but it fell out of fashion and now they can't shift it off the shelves. No one's going short of protein if whaling stopped, are they? Definitely not. And, nobody, and, and, and it, interestingly, nobody's going short of money either. There's only the, the, the counter uh, out, out of those whaling vessels that's full-time whaling. The rest of them, they, they've got other alternatives. No argument that they're going to lose money because they, they can go fishing. I think the sales stuff will be absolutely fascinating. Like, how do you market this product that you know people don't really want? I'm looking forward to it. Me yeah. too. I know it's hard to find money for research, but at the same time, the government pumped millions of kronar to market whale meat without studying the minky properly. That, to me, blows my mind. I'm now just above the Arctic Circle in the city of Buda. I'm speaking to the sales manager at one of Norway's largest whale meat processing companies, Nufutval. I'm interested to see what he thinks is the future of the whaling industry here and how Norway's whaling fits into the global picture. What made you get involved in the whale industry? They needed a good salesman. Why have you chosen to work in an industry that is not that profitable, just out of interest? I think this, uh, this uh, resource has a future. We need to find new ways to, to reach new markets. For, for example, tataki, sashimi, sushi. You can use it for pizza, for taco, for, for you name it. Every food you can think. From a sales perspective, is the only real market for minky whale in Norway? The whole world um, probably uh, is a market for, for whale. Would you like the Norwegian market to grow and potentially for Norway to catch the full quota that they're allowed? Of course, I want growth. If you are in the sales business and you don't want growth, you are in probably in, in the wrong business. Why don't Norwegians engage more with whaling or know more about whale meat? In the uh, EU and, and a lot of other countries, they say no to whale hunting. So this is politics because the reactions from the from the outside world will probably come mm -hmm. you, you understand what i'm saying yeah. so uh, we 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 keep it in our own business this is a norwegian business do you think that norway actually has a responsibility to look at the impact that this whaling could be having for minky populations globally. If there is something to, uh, uh, that said uh, the population on the whale is falling, uh, this is uh, not good, they will stop. I find it very difficult to accept that something is sustainable if we don't know the global picture. And scientists can't tell us if the population is going down. They can tell us how many are in Norway's waters, but not over the whole world. So, but maybe nobody knows. But do you think that's an issue, that nobody knows these things? What if we need way more whales in the ocean, which we do after commercial whaling? And we can also say, the, say to the uh, scientists, do more research. Does the fact that the rest of the world hasn't done that research, does that mean that Norway should perhaps not whale until we have that research? I think we don't know enough um, about the impact on the, on the rest of the world. And that's why I say, let's have more uh, investigation because if we don't have it, how can we draw a conclusion?
she chose the same cove as we did to camp, so we've been blockaded in by her. She was anchored this morning when we put to sea, but we went lads on tour mode with no life jackets on, jerseys and all the beer out to make it look like we're just a, a lads tour. We got past them, went to sea, hid behind the island here, and we watched her weigh anchor. When we reduce hunting of whales, many populations bounce back to astonishing degrees. That's another one. <laughs> you see that one? Yeah. In most societies, whale watching is by far the most lucrative way of living with whales. I think he's coming under us. <laughs> Many times you get out of the water and you think, oh, we're so lucky to be out here to witness this. Well, Rich, that put a smile on your face, mate. We are seeing this shift to the value of services for living whales in many places. Well, in Iceland, historically there was hunting around Reykjavik, but then there was a burgeoning whale watching industry and that became economically more viable than the whaling industry around. So there was a sanctuary put in there. There's clearly a feed ball here. There's two humpbacks working around us and 10 or a dozen minke whales. They're breaching all the time. Unfortunately, the fish bank won. She's very much in the know of where the whales are here. It's literally 15 minutes steam from our anchorage and all these whales. We're in a good position now anyway to get her as soon as she fires. I'm here in Reinar, my last stop in Norway, and my final chance to put the puzzle pieces together as to just why Norway is hunting whales in the 21st century. I have touched a minke whale, yes, when I was uh, 13, 14 years. I was outside here in a small boat. I came a minke whale, it was just a small kid, and he came up to the boat, and I touched uh, the head. But um, I maybe I've shot him at this some sometimes uh, later. Does that not make you feel anything that you could have shot this whale that you had an experience with? It's the way of of life. Maybe he lives still up there. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Do you think they'll ever downlist the minky so you'll be able to export it? Yeah, sometime, sometime in the future. When do you think? Uh, when people in the Westerly world get starving. That will come. The problem is that the number of people in the world are rising. So we have to produce more, more food. And one of the ways is to uh, manage the ecosystem in the sea as good as possible. Do you think it's human's job to manage the ecosystem? You can live three days without water. You can live 14 days without food. Then you have to shoot people. Is that uh, an option? Two or three or four atomic bomb in Ukraine? What should be it? You think whale? Should you tear down the rainforest or what should you do? We've got footage of the grenades not working. Now we need to capture the scale of industrial whaling. There's about four or five whales stacking around the hotel. Yeah, there's, there's spouts anywhere, look. A big feed ball here. How you done, Harpoon? Is he? Yeah, I chucked in the, the whale that's on board up. 
in the process, you know. Yeah, you just concentrate on that. It shouldn't happen. The whale to the front of the boat now. Harpoon's gone. Yeah. Has it hit the whale, Rich? The line's not taut yet. Uh, no, it's taut, yeah. They've got it. Yeah, we're Let's in. go. Let's go. These whales are facing multiple threats, so it's not enough to stop whaling. Right now, it's a tough time to be a whale. They are very much on the edge. We have a responsibility, and we can decide. In the world's current state and the concerns about food shortages, this whaling narrative that Norway's pushing, that they could fill that void, uh, that whales are affecting their fish stocks. And right now they're pushing that narrative to continue hunting minkies, but where does it stop? Do they then carry on to humpbacks, then fin whales, blue whales? Where, where does it stop? What will end Norway's commercial whaling industry is the Norwegian people. When they understand all of the facts behind it, they will be the ones that will pressure government to stop commercial whaling in Norwegian waters. So it's a bit sad, really. There's a one whale semi-butchered, all the blood coming off the side of the vessel, uh, and another whale just hung alongside on the, the port hand bow there. The bowman picked up the rifle and was aiming at the drone, so he was clearly not happy about the drone being there. It really was like shooting whales in a barrel, really. Yeah, a tragic day for, for whales today. Not great to see kind of getting used to seeing this now, having witnesses of a few vessels. Yeah. It just seems to be a continuous cycle of, uh, of whaling. Yeah, it was pretty disgusting, really, wasn't it? Not nice to see, but, uh, yeah, well done, lads. You know, we got all the footage we needed. Yeah. I'm left with so many questions about why it's happening. Me too. If there's no huge market and tradition is fading out, I really don't see the point. In the Norwegian parliament, it was no opposition. From the very right to the very left, they are all for whaling. A kind of self-determination. This can be done, why can't we do it? Do you think Norway continues to whale just because it can? Some people will say yes. If the IWC allowed Norway to hunt other species of whales, do you think that Norway would? I know that there are Norwegian whalers and fishermen who would like to hunt humpback whales. Some want to hunt fin whales. Both of them have very good meat to eat. There have been French cooks, and they have asked, why don't we import this and serve it in France? So yes, there could be a market. Since I've been in Norway, I've heard lots of different stories about whaling. And for me, it kind of feels like we're at a crossroad. In one way, whaling could stop in Norway. People aren't really eating whale meat. And if it's not economically viable, whaling could just cease to exist. On the other hand, whalers show no sign of wanting to stop. And I have heard about plans to expand and to grow. In that scenario, we could see exports, we could see a growing market. What that could mean for species like the minke or other species as their populations bound back and people deem them safe to hunt. But what's happening here in Norway could really have global ramifications if whaling does continue. <laughs>